everyone. My name is Emma and welcome back to the Arizona Science Center Facebook page for our 1 p.m. live demo. So today we are going to be learning about the science of hula hooping. It's a really fun summer activity that I'm sure everyone's tried at least once in their life, but today we're going to be talking about some of the physics that actually make hula hooping work. And maybe you'll get some tips and tricks to make your hula hooping a little bit more successful. So my first thing that we're gonna talk about is the size of the hoop. So I'm gonna take a step back. I have two hoops with me today. I have a small blue one and a pretty big uh, green and purple one. So, I'm an adult, I'm a, an adult sized person. Which hula hoop do you think is gonna work better for me? If you think you know, put it in the comments. It was kind of a hint when I said I'm adult sized. The bigger hoop is gonna be easier for me. When sizing your hula hoop, go ahead and put it down on the ground and you want the hula hoop to kind of come up to your waist. That's gonna make it much easier when we spin it on our waist. So I'm gonna put the blue one aside. I'm gonna go ahead and start hula hooping. So I am just turning it around on my waist, but how does that actually happen? Why is it staying there? Why does it keep moving? Why doesn't it fall to the ground? Does anybody know how I'm keeping the hula hoop in the air? you think you know, put it in the comments. But it's okay, because I'm gonna tell you. Well, to start our hula hoops momentum, we have to give it a angular force called torque. If you guys tuned in on Tuesday for our science of aerial hoop, you would have learned about torque as well. Torque is how you start rotational momentum. So that's why the hoop is spinning. Do any of you notice what I'm doing with my hips? I'm moving them side to side. That is helping the hoop stay in motion. If I stop moving, the hoop still spins, but did you guys notice how it span when I stopped moving my hips? It slowed down and fell. So I am continuously applying force by rocking my hips side to side to keep the hoop going. We saw it when I stop, gravity starts to act on the hoop and pushes it down to the ground. But I'm able to counteract that gravity by moving my hips side to side. There's another force in play when we talk about hula hoops. It's kind of how when the hula hoop is touching my clothes. Does anybody know what force that might be? It's friction. So when the hoop is rubbing against my clothes, it is creating friction. And that both slows the hoop down and actually helps keep it up on my body. Now, we know that gravity is gonna go ahead and move the hoop down when I stop moving, but in hula hoop, that's not always a bad thing. Say I wanted to move the hoop from my hips to my knees. I could stop and restart, or I could let gravity do the work for me. I can go ahead and start slowing down my hips so it starts to fall, and then when it hits where I want it to be, down by my knees, I start speeding up my movement to pick up that rotational movement and I'm able to hula hoop on my knees. And then when I'm done, I can just stop and it'll fall to the ground. So when we are hula hooping, we wanna think about torque to get our hoop moving. That's the rotational momentum to start the spin. We wanna think about gravity because gravity is always pushing us down onto earth, including our hoop. And we wanna think about friction. 
So when you're at home with your hula hoop, try out those different sizes. Let's see how this small one works for me. It doesn't. I don't have enough room to move my hips the way I need to in order to keep it up. But try your different size hoops to see how they work for you and try different clothing to see if that affects the friction on your hoop to see if you can keep it going. Now, hula hooping on your waist is fine, but there's so many other things that you can do with hoop as well. So I do want to teach you all a little tip and trick for hula hooping on your hand. So a lot of us, when we learned to hula hoop on our hands, did it on the wrist. Well, you don't have a lot of control of the hoop when it's on your wrist. See, it's already creeping up to my elbow. I can't really do any tricks like that. So I'm gonna recommend for us is to actually hoop on our hands ourselves. So I'm gonna put the hoop, create like an L, and then I can start the spin. This way my thumb is preventing the hoop from moving back, but I'm still able to move my hand, create that torque so the hoop can start spinning. And the friction is created by the hoop moving against my hand. So that's gonna give us more control and we can go ahead and learn how to do a little J toss under our leg. So once you have your hoop going on your hand, what you're gonna do is practice moving your hand around and once you feel good moving, we're gonna toss it under our leg. So I'm gonna, since I'm spinning it in my right hand, I'm gonna toss it under my left leg. Oop, I was spinning in the wrong direction, sorry. Yep, so we can know that gravity is gonna bring our hoop back down when we toss it in the air, it's on our hand so we can control it. And we're gonna take it under our leg and do a nice little toss. So that's a fun hula hooping trick that you can try at home this summer. If you know any other fun hula hooping tricks, tag us on social media, Arizona Science Center. But remember, when you're hula hooping, go ahead and try to think about the three forces acting on the hoop. Let's try to remember them. First is torque to start our rotational momentum. We want to think about gravity pushing our hoop to the ground and friction on our clothes. So those three things will help us become successful hula hoopers. Um, tune back in tomorrow for another science demo and check out our website azscience.org for more fun science activities and demos. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Bye.